Hey there everyone. We've seen a return to normalcy here. We are at about 30 degrees instead of negative 3. And our fortune to begin, what's the speed of dark? Today's review is PG Tips. This is England's number one tea, 1930. <clears throat> I'm quite due for a cup. I just finished a nice relaxing bath. I finished up a science fiction short story I was in the middle of. And my cup is full. So, <clears throat> I'm using the recommended one pyramid tea bag. That's the cat. She's messing around in the dregs of my bath water. I'm knocking things over. So, um... Usually I would take tea quite strong, but just for the review, I'm going to have the allotment of one tea bag. And it's an attractive package with the tea field and the lid. So when I opened it, this glue, I suppose, was supposed to keep this lid sort of seated down on the top, but it was loose and also it was troublesome a little bit to get into the tea because um, they had designed kind of a way that you could pop out this top to expose the tea bags it didn't really work very well so um, that's okay though uh, and not really too many details just this sea of green stretching out in front of me uh, tea leaves and some information about the company. And it's all very bland. Okay, well, one interesting little snack. <laughs> one <t> tidbit. <laughs> I'm thinking about these snacks I'm about to review. They're right in front of me, and I'm very excited to get to them, so I must have snacks on the brain. <clears throat> so, um, this tidbit does seem a little bit interesting to me. What makes PG Tips so good? Using only the top two leaves and the bud of the tea leaf plant. Well, that's common when we learn about fine tea from China. At least they're um, choosing some nice youngish leaves. And these pyramid tea bags, they're in fashion now, big time. And I remember being an early adopter. Uh, forgot the brand, but I, I guess I enjoy them. Really, um, I suppose it is an improvement because full immersion is very important to me, um, just so that the leaves can really dance. All right, um, let's move forward into the whiff test. Just kind of the usual dense black tea aroma. <sighs> okay, something of a dark. Murkiness that's um common with these dark teas. The telltale astringency is there. Thick tannins on the palate. Um, a sensation where the flavor is battling from behind the tannin top note. It's got a palate um, coating kind of a quality. Uh, long after the sip, there's sort of the um, the revelry of the tea on my tongue and gums. It's pretty smooth and drinkable despite having that murkiness. Hmm. Hmm. 
a suitable blend for the hand of the hen teacup. <clears throat> Seems somehow to be an appropriate tea for this mug. Uh, for the sheer uh, novelty of it, and to have a bit of a um, different experience from my usual tea sipping. Uh, I'm okay with it, but coming face to face with this flavor, um, it's difficult for me to cross over into calling it pleasant. Now, uh, if I was having this with some a dollop of cream or sweetening it heavily, it would be a much different story. Uh, this way of processing tea is foreign to the tea growing lands. It's foreign to the way that I would process tea. I've grown tea on two occasions, but never really processed it. Inside the bag, I see a very um, kind of a um, dirt-like consistency with very small pieces of the tea leaves. And that once bright bleached tea bag is now browned. All right, so um, my general thoughts are neutral. Even using the um, recommended one tea bag, um, there's not really any kind of a pleasant note unfolding, and it's difficult for me. Uh, to say that because I use tea as a drug and as a vehicle for caffeine and so I enjoy it quite a lot. Um, I enjoy it in a way that is a little bit divorced from the actual sensation of the drinking. Uh, so when I'm <clears throat> I'm very immoderate when it comes to caffeine cons consumption too. So uh, often I'll swill a whole cup of coffee or tea just in a couple of swallows but like a lot of things in life to get to the good effects often we have to just kind of grit our teeth and uh, do it so overall uh, definitely more pleasant than the um, yellow label Lipton that I reviewed a few weeks ago just because there's a little bit more of a smooth roundness to the flavor um, but I probably <laughs> overdid it with that other blend and made it way too strong mm, my tendency with this brand would be to double up the tea bags really making it very dark and murky uh, and and just use it use it for the drug effect uh, because even even with the steeping here of this of this one bag, uh, there's not a um, playfulness in the flavor at all. It's it's a very uh, straightforward. It's kind of a um, utilitarian taste. And very uh, drying on the palate. The heavy heavy astringency that's a part of the processing is um, off-putting to me. I'm used to having intense flavors, but it's the opposite with the usual tea I drink. The Puer tea has a slipperiness and oiliness and a, a very smooth, um, smooth, like a slipperiness on the palate, which is very different from this puckering sort of a sensation. But um, uniform itty deserves accolade. So um, I'm certain that every single bag of this is going to be exactly the same. And um, it captures me a little bit with the presentation of the packaging and the idea of this tea. Um, there's something hidden there. There's a little bit of an embedded um, 
um, emotion that rises in me, especially when I can make a statement like, it seems like a very appropriate tea for Hannah the Hen. So, I'll put it into rotation. I'm definitely not wowed by it. I considered getting some other teas, a smattering of boxes today, but I just chose to go with straight, strict black utilitarian tea that will provide me with the drug effect and uh, just break out, uh, break a little bit of my usual regime, which is one or two varieties of tea all day long. Well, that's about it. Um, this has been a review of PG Tips, Poltergeist Tips, and take a tip from me, drink more tea, Hannah says, may your day be filled with happiness.